ruins of Italy speak of them. The poppies of Flanders stand for them. They still echo across Vimy Ridge. The flatlands of the Dutch can hear them. They are ghosts on the shores of France. They haunt the sea off Normandy. They have left their scars on the soil of Picardy. They are remembered by the sand. They live in the minds of old men who still travel the roads of the Somme. They are the dead, the Canadian dead of the two world wars, a hundred thousand of them. They died in far places, places which still live and remember. Artificial harbors for ships of war, now breakwaters for Norman fishermen. The son remembers them as a child, frightened at the great sounds, crouching in a cellar, having to be told that the invading men were friends. The father remembers that it was difficult to fish that summer of 44, for they were using the sea and the beach. But then, the beach has always belonged to the visitors. How long ago that June day, when Canadians struck from the sea. For each of the Norman villagers, the day of the Canadians has its special memory. Madame Soulange had never seen such cigarettes, and she smoked all day until she was quite ill. The mayor shook many hands, captains, majors, even colonels. Grenier, the farmer, opened the vat of Calvados, Applejack they called it, and drank a year's supply. 
Soon they were dancing with each other and with his wife and even with him. And then they slept soundly in the yard. In the morning they moved on through the land of William the Conqueror. For this was not the ancient war of siege, but the modern war of movement. A war where even ancient graveyards felt death again. They left behind a liberated people and their dead in final dignity. Normandy was a place of great victory. Others died in the terrible places of defeat. <laughs> Hong Kong had seen them as fresh, unblooded troops. Then they heard the hills had got them. Canadians, exhausted by the hills, attacked in the hills, killed in the beautiful hills of Hong Kong. They fought for 18 days and ended on Saiwan Bay. Places of defeat, places where they never stood a chance. Buried with full honors, head to head, in the German style. Canadians will surround and occupy the French port of Dieppe. They will attack from the sea at first light. They will withdraw the same day. Nine hours of a burning day, and few even reached the streets. They were killed by the cliffs, and the enemy that looked down on them from the cliffs. was bombarded by the English and Dutch in the 17th century and then remained peaceful until the 19th of August 1942 when a largely Canadian force raided the port with very heavy casualties. But all that is in the past. Dieppe, oldest of the French seaside resorts, has been rebuilt. On your right is the 15th century castle. Below, on the beach, are a host of attractions. A 
French port of death for Canada. And an Irish port of life. Londonderry, haven for Canada's Navy at the end of the North Atlantic run. The memories of a harbour master. Memories of the little grey corvettes of Canada that he stacked four deep against the quay. They came in then not from a sea they loved, but from a sea of fear. They were not the old salts. They were just boys, most of them, blustering and brave. They would go up from their ships, through the rain, up through the diamond, and onto the town. Memories in the pubs of sudden friendships and last farewells of the few good gay days between the awful sea. Some of the haunts are dead now, and some of the men. For most, the graveyard was the sea, for some, an Irish hill. Other memorials decaying on an English field. Memories of the Lancaster and Spitfire, of young men who called them Lanks and Spits and flew them out to die. Commonwealth Memorial at Runnymede. On it, with the others, the names of the 3,000 Canadian airmen 
who disappeared forever in the sky. Memories over the gentle green heart of England. Memories in the searing brown heart of Sicily. Canadians moved through this cruel and alien land once in a burning July. The old people remember, for they had been starving and they were fed. And they heard stirring sounds of strange music and they will tell the children. An episode to be passed down, now a part of the Sicilian legend of death, a part of the ancient land of blood. For many of their companions, death waited further north in Italy. Some lie buried in great cemeteries near the famed battlegrounds. Such was Casino. Others are buried in the smaller plots of land, like Ortona. Ortona, to the Canadians who fought there, is the body of a dead friend in the rubble. He remembers it was cold then, and the sound in the city was more than he would ever hear again. paused for Christmas. A matter of hours, then back to the street fight. War, turning Italian Christmas into hell. 
War turning the Dutch canals from lifelines into ditches of death. Of all the Canadian battlefields of the Second World War, the Netherlands is where they are best remembered. The young Canadians brought back the old life. dikes had been blown and the sea had come and they wondered if the crops would ever grow again. They wondered if children would ever walk again across the open countryside. These children have no memories of that war, but each year they are taken to the Canadian cemetery at Grosbeek, as other Dutch children are taken to all the other war cemeteries in the land. They are taken here so that they will know of the men who faced fear and death that they might be born unafraid. Other markers of the Second War stitched across a monument to the dead of the First World War, the Menin Gate at Ypres. Nineteen seventeen, when it led to Flanders Fields, when Canadians moved through it, when Ypres was wipers to the world and a city of death. They rebuilt it with its great cloth hall and its thousand years of history, and the scars of 1418 remain only on its soul. Eep new Canadians as marching feet. To Mons, they were the men who came on the last day of the Great War and marched in victory through the square. The old man was watching them that morning. Have a cup of coffee, his mother had called to them. We did not know Canada was in the war. Arras had known Canada was in the war. Her soldiers had gone from here through the chalk tunnels that led to the lines at Vimy Ridge. They would never know such days again, these towns of Picardy. The 
They made her famous with their song. She never understood the words, but she laughed along with them, for they would soon be dead. In Eep, the day is ending. As it is each evening, eyes turn to the Menin Gate. 55,000 names, 7,000 Canadian. It is time in the old Flemish city to pause for the dead. The world moves on through Amiens, Albert, Plug Street and Popperinge, moving as the doomed men moved on their way to no man's land. The last soldier killed in action. And how many went before Private Price? Ten million, but they can only guess. 60,000 Canadians, all within a hundred miles of each other. The Western Front of 1914-18. The greatest concentration of death the world has ever seen. Not even the earth can throw off the imprint of the great trench.
sheep can graze on battlefields. Money can be made from battlefields. Men can be remembered by battlefields. The caribou of Newfoundland looks out over Beaumont Hamel. Men can stand in 1916 with the 800 impatient Newfoundlanders and watch them go over the top and watch 700 of them fall in the gaps of their own barbed wire and in no man's land beyond. Battlefields preserved. Battlefields transformed. The Canadian memorials at Le Canel and Bourlon Wood. The block of Canadian granite at Jury and Sanctuary Wood. Passchendaele, where men choked to death on mud. Courcelette, where men first saw the tank. Saint Julian, where men first felt poison gas. Time passes. Monuments and men grow mellow, and there are no longer friends and enemies, but only victims. A man alone at the place of the great defense. A crowd at the place of the great offense. Report from the 79th German Division. April 1917. The Canadian trenches below Vimy Ridge are alive with activity. They are good troops and well suited for assaulting. Below Hill 145, the Canadians are separated by a single line of craters from the German front line. Easter Monday, 1917. The Canadians throw themselves at Vimy Ridge.
11,000 names of Canadians who vanished. And they were joined in violent death by other Canadians until there were a hundred thousand memories of the two world wars over the fields of sacrifice. <laughs>